I will be uh, talking about how HD Condor helps us uh, at the Rubin Observatory's uh, United States Data Facility, which is at SLAC. Uh, and after that, I'll also describe some other projects uh, at NCSA where we benefit from HD Condor. Uh, so Rubin Observatory, it's been under construction for, for some time now, and it's uh, getting close uh, to its uh, showtime. So uh, it's um, uh, had important milestones recently and more coming up in 2024 with the first photon, first light, and operations to begin uh, soon after that in 25. So uh, at that time, the 10-year survey, LSP survey, uh, will begin. And so the project's getting ready for uh, 20 terabytes of data each night. And so this data will be managed at three key data facilities. So there's a US data facility, and then also a French and UK uh, DF. And so data is initially transferred uh, from Chile to uh, Slack. And then after that, it gets uh, replicated with Rusio uh, and um, over to, uh, you know, select subsets go to uh, France and, and the UK. Um, and the project has a lot of different kinds of, of processing to do. So I'll just mention, uh, highlight, you know, a couple. Um, so there's first going to be sort of a systematic production that's going to go across uh, all these sites. And that's going to be managed with Panda. And, and so that's sort of more, you know, predictable systematic, uh, but we also, to sort of support that production, there's gonna be work of developers and scientists at the USDF. And this is gonna be a bit more varied, it's gonna be multiple users, uh, and, and it's still gonna be large scale, that, that scientists and developers have to run against uh, large data sets to, to verify things. So this is targeted for use uh, using HTML. Uh, and this will run over a Slurm cluster. Uh, and so for the workflow component, the project has a sort of generic piece uh, called the BPS, uh, batch, pro batch Production Service. Uh, and then that generic piece sort of becomes concrete with plugins for different systems. So there's a plugin for Panda and Parcel and and also HD Condor. And the HD Condor plugin is where how we make use of Dagman workflows. So the USDF uh, has a sort of a shared facility. So uh, the S3DF uh, is a uh, Slurm cluster facility used by multiple projects, including Ruben. Uh, and there's a good number of nodes and cores to use, and this, this number seems to keep increasing. So there's definitely resources available, but from the perspective of running our control BPS HD Condor, we have no persistent Condor pool. So uh, the Condor pool has to be supplied by some, some sort of glide-in mechanism. So we have, uh, we have a means of supporting that with uh, some Python packages within our the software stack. And so um, the way that sort of works is we'll run a central manager and access point on our development nodes. And so those start up and then there's no worker nodes and those have to be supplied then by the user users running the and And it's a pretty simple mechanism. Uh, so our our package supplies a uh, allocate nodes facility uh, a utility, and um, and there's command line arguments for users to specify. Um, uh, they can so they can describe you know their gliding. So they sort of get to choose. They can pick the number number of gliding they want to run and how many cores, like what what chunk size of a node to take. Um, and then the general sort of glide in allocate nodes utility works against a platform package that supplies the templates and, and that information gets parsed into the templates. And we've had the software kind of around for a long time. And so we've used it back on old HPC machines. 
Uh, we used it on the blue water system to uh, run uh, large scale exercises there. Uh, and but we've recently updated it now to also run at uh, the USDA. And so where are we right now? Our, our current status is that, well, things, you know, we're off to the start. Users can, it's working. Users can run uh, their jobs across thousands of cores. But we're, you know, but we're trying to make things better because we do have some, some limitations. And, and that sort of comes in the area that this facility doesn't have any means to sort of maintain the guidance through a workflow. So if a workflow kind of waxes and wanes in size, then guidance can time out. And then a user has to sort of um, resubmit by hand or uh, set up a, a tricky cron job. Um, so we're thinking about how we can support these end-to-end -end workflows you know, better. And so the talk yesterday, the Dagman talk yesterday, uh, describing the service, uh, service nodes and provision nodes. So we're thinking about whether we might be able to take that sort of uh, functionality and integrate that sort of into um, the, the BPS and Dagman management. So maybe that can you know take care of that for the users. Uh, so we're thinking about that, and we're also thinking uh, whether we also might you know maybe change strategy sort of altogether and maybe see if we can benefit from these open science grid containers, the factory front end. So we could you know we could change strategy and try this approach if we sort of can learn how to learn more about these tools. And um, and uh, although we do have some constraints though, and that our users are kind of used to having ownership of their output files, uh, and if uh, if we set up a factory that runs on a service account, that might break that. Uh, and a factory might also um, sort of supply you know glidance of one size fits all, and our, and our users might be used to um, you know customizing. So, um, so we're sort of that's sort of a decision point we're at now about whether we keep building on what we have or whether we try to benefit from existing uh, services. And just overall, the the general success of H Condor at USDF also has the project thinking that we might just uh, set up a small pool down at the summit in Chile. And so that's sort of a, an idea. So, um, so that's sort of status with Ruben. And in addition to that, I wanted to mention how we use HD Condor actually in a lot of projects that NCSA is involved in. Uh, so Ruben uh, is example number one, uh, but we've also been using uh, Condor in the dark energy survey uh, for many years. And that project is now in the late stages, um, but we're still running some productions over the survey footprint. Um, and recently we've uh, done work at Fermilab using their new job sub utility, and that's working good for us. And, and the glidance, this, the running glidance with that is actually very reminiscent of the Ruben case where we have uh, operations people running the Dagman workflows, and then I get to serve as the glidance factory. Um, and we're also, I'm also doing some work setting up a Frontier Squid to see if that can uh, support some of the South Pole telescope factories. Um, and another large project that we're starting to get involvement in is the CMBS4 project. And we've been doing some prototyping for that project in the, the uh, fabric test bed. And I wanted to spend a little time uh, talking about those two things. Um, so CMBS4 is an early stage project and it's targeted to run like in the 2030s. So this is a ways out. Uh, it would be a millimeter wave uh, survey that would run at uh, two sites, in, one in the South Pole and, and Chile. And, uh, and some of the science goals of CMBS4 are related to, to transient and NCSA's involvement is in this is in this area. And so um, and so we are 
um, looking, so we're looking to prototype the sort of uh, de detect, uh, detect transients and announce to the community via a, sort of a prompt processing type um, scenario. And so to do that, that's where we, we started looking at the fabric test fit. And so fabric is, this is sort of based out of Renzi, if I think that's correct. And, and this is sort of a um, kind of a cloud, kind of an intranet, um, but it's a programmable infrastructure where you can sort of customize and build up, build up your infrastructure full of VMs and networks. And, and there's many sites that have uh, resources um, and they're uh, all connected by these high-speed uh, high networks. And so users can work in this test bed and they can start up VMs and make networks and route them together. And, um, and, uh, and they can do this through uh, a Python API. Yeah. Uh, and so, so we've started working with this. And so this is kind of what fabric, look, you know, all of fabric looks like. And, um, and so, so each link is, uh, has a potential for 100 gigabits per second. And in our prototyping, we sort of, um, to sort of represent our data, coming from the South, coming from uh, Chile or South, uh, South Pole. So we mocked that up using the FIU site. And when you start up um, your resources in Fabric, it's, it's, we call this a slice. And so it might look something like this. So you, you start up your VMs at the various sites and you can create networks at the sites and uh, sort of connect them, uh, connect uh, your machines up with a NIC. Uh, and, and so this is sort of the picture of the slice at the beginning, and then you can route these together. And so after starting up your resources in Fabric, the first thing that immediately comes to your mind is, can I run HE Condor uh, on these machines? And we see that we can. And so the way we go about this is that we create a level three uh, IPv6 network at each of our sites and we add our VM to it and we add the routes. And then we uh, configure Condor on all these machines sort of using the uh, uh, IPv6 address uh, that we've uh, you know, set up on these networks. So we uh, set the collector host uh, on, for, to the IP of one of these machines and point to all the other all the other machines to it. Um, and, and so we think that as we start this up that we now have a pool that's running over these networks that we've set up. And, um, and sort of the way we've uh, sort of envisioned this then is we, we start up a workflow on our central machine, say in this example at NCSA, uh, and then we submit jobs to the pool and those can pull data from our uh, mock observatory at FIU. And for uh, performance transfer over these networks, we found that a tool like dbcopy uh, works pretty well. And so we're leaning towards using that. Uh, and so, yeah, and so I guess we're, we're looking forward to the, to the DB Condor, HD Condor plugin. Uh, and so, um, so this is the the prototyping, the study that we've done to date, and um, and we want to we're going to continue to work um, work with this to sort of try to set up, um, you know, prompt prompt type processing um, where we can make detections and and then issue alerts. And so I can stop there. <laughs>